Hello everybody, this is Daniel from the digipicture.com. Welcome to the third part of my tutorial series in which I show you how I process an HDR night photograph using the tools DxO Photo Lab, Aurora HDR and Affinity Photo. In the first video we talked about preparing the HDR bracketing using the RAW converter DxO Photo Lab. In the second video we went on to the actual HDR process and used the software Aurora HDR 2018 to merge the HDR bracketing. In this third and last video I am going to show you how I finalize the image using the image editor Affinity Photo. Alright. As you can see, I've already loaded the image into Affinity Photo. I'm going to show you now step by step how I process this image in order to finalize it for publication on the internet, for example. The first step is I want to make sure that uh, the image contains all the tonal values from zero, meaning black, to pure white. In order to do this I open the layer menu and I add an adjustment layer levels adjustment. The levels adjustment is very handy to correct tonal values because if you press down the ALT button and move the sliders, Affinity shows you the areas that are pure black. In this case I go for an adjustment of 1% and the same with pure white. and for pure for white level I leave the slider at 100% because I don't want to get too many overexposed areas. Now we can close the adjustment layer and if we deactivate the layer and activate it again we can already see the difference the whole image looks a bit more how to say a bit more crunchy a bit uh, it, it has become a little bit darker and we have now all the tonal values present from pure black to pure white There is also another neat little trick I learned in a book I read of, uh, about uh, HDR imaging. You can add a gradient map and there I've prepared a, a preset. I've called it Zones Check and what it does is it uh, divides the tonal values into two, three, four, five, six, seven areas. We have the lowest two percent which are shown in blue and represent the darkest tonal values. Then we have a, a bigger area that's shown in black, another one shown in dark gray, uh, in mid gray, in uh, brighter gray, almost white and red for the overexposed 2% of uh, the tonal values. With this gradient map we can easily check the tonal values and how they are distributed over the image. We can see now that we have in fact 
one area here that is overexposed and a few small areas here that are actually pure black. This is completely all right in my opinion because the areas here, these small areas don't really matter. They can be pure black. That doesn't uh, ruin the image. And it's the same with this image with this window here that is pure white. And if we switch off the gradient map again, we can see that it's pure white because there is a light source right over the window and that doesn't really ruin the image as well because yeah there's a light source so if it's pure white there it's not important for the there is no important detail there that needs to be retained so in my opinion this distribution of the tonal values is perfectly fine you can easily create a preset for this zones check yourself it does not only work in affinity photo it does only work in photoshop and it's a really handy tool to fine tune the the tonal values of your images i normally i add this layer to all my images and whenever i want to check the tonal values i can simply activate the layer and take a look make a few adjustments check the tonal values again like I said it's it's a really handy tool I really recommend you creating your own preset in order to check the tonal values okay the next step would be noise reduction if we look at the sky we can see quite a bit of luminance noise it's not bad because you can also see by the way you can also see it in the dark areas here on the roof for example the noise is not too bad because we've already applied noise reduction in DxO Photo Lab as well as in Aurora HDR so the remaining noise can be tackled by a technique calling LAB noise reduction for this we merge all visible layers we call this layer LAB noise reduction and we convert the color format from RGB 16-bit to LAB 16-bit then we select the channels and we deactivate all the channels except the lightness or luminance channel that's if you if you look at the image now you can see that the luminance channel is the channel that actually contains the noise so that's the benefit of working in LAB mode, in LAB color mode, we can now address the noise in the luminance channel without affecting the color channels of the LAB color space. So we go to filters, noise, denoise and we use the luminance denoise slider to adjust 
the amount of noise reduction applied. As there is not too much noise, we also don't need to apply too much noise reduction. I'd say, well, 60%. Let's try 60%. And if you click on this button here, you can activate the split view and see you see now the the image before on the left side on the right side and after on the left side so if we compare the two areas here before we can see there is a bit of noise and if we move the slider to the right and look at the same area we can see that the noise has been removed almost completely. So with 60% I'm satisfied. I click on apply All right. and now we can also check the areas over here, for example, the roof. If we deactivate the noise reduction layer, we can see quite a bit of noise. And if we activate it again, it's suppressed. In fact, the noise reduction for the detailed area here is a bit too strong because with every noise reduction technique, you lose detail and I don't want to trade in too much detail for noise reduction. That's why I create a mask for this noise reduction layer. And I go to Edit, Fill, and fill that mask with a gray value of 128. That's 50%. So by creating this mask and filling it with a mid gray value of 128, the overall noise reduction effect is at 50%. And now I can select the brush. I can choose white and I brush in over the sky the noise I want to increase the noise reduction in the sky so I brush in the effect there using the brush with an opacity of well let's say 50% flow I leave the flow at 25% and I also want a hard, uh, reduced hardness so I leave it at 25% I increase the brush size because there is no need to be super exact here and I paint over the sky to increase the noise reduction effect Right, let's check the mask now. You can check the mask by either by right clicking on it and selecting edit mask or there's a shortcut you press the alt button and click on the mask and as you can see there is already 
an increased area over the sky with a brighter gray than, the, than for the rest of the mask. That means that the effect is already stronger in the sky than in the rest of the image. But I want to further increase the effect in the sky, so I paint over that area once more. And also over here. All right, let's go back to the image and check the noise reduction. If we deactivate the noise reduction and activate it, we can see the difference. Yeah, it's definitely visible. In fact, I may even reduce the opacity of the noise reduction layer to, let's say, 80% because there is not too much noise and like I've already mentioned, whenever you apply noise reduction you trade in details for noise reduction and because of the fact that noise is not too present in this image, I don't want to lose too much detail to suppress every last bit of noise. And that's why I've reduced the, opac uh, the opacity of the noise reduction layer to 80%. Now I'm satisfied with the noise reduction, so I duplicate this, now I merge the visible layers to a new pixel layer. I reactivate all the LAB channels and I switch the color format back to RGB 16 bit. And if we do a final comparison of these two new layers, the one that contains the noise reduction and the one that is merged from all the underlying layers, if we switch them off and on again, we can see that we've successfully suppressed the noise in the sky without losing too much detail in the foreground. We can also check the roofs here and we can also see the difference. The noise is reduced quite a bit but there is not too much detail lost. Because we don't want to lose our work in a system crash, the next step is very important. We are going to save the document. Yes. I want to overwrite and I am renaming this merged layer to something like copy. Now we can continue our, our adjustments by adding another adjustment layer, vibrance adjustment. And in this case I choose a value of 10%. tweak the colors further by using the HL, HSL adjustment which lets you adjust the saturation and luminosity for the different colors. There's also the possibility to add a global adjustment but I prefer to adjust the different colors individually. For this I start with the reds If we move the slider, we can see the difference. 
and I choose a value of 10% and I reduce the luminosity of the reds by 5%. The same with the yellows. Also a saturation shift of 10%. But in this case, I leave luminosity at 0%. Next up are the greens. There are not mm, many areas in the image that contain green, so I leave the green at 0. Let's go on with science. also choose a value of 10% and I reduce the luminosity by 5%. Next up are blues. They are mostly present in the sky but also in the gravity over here and there are also some blue tones in the shadows. That's why I choose a value of 15% and I reduce the luminosity by 5%. And last but not least we have magentas which are hardly present at all. That's why I leave them alone. Now we can do a quick comparison. We select the two adjustment layer. We just added Vibrance and HSL adjustment. Yes, the difference is quite obvious. The colors are now much more intense, but they are not overly saturated. With saturation, it's always kind of um, you have you have to restrain yourself because if you overdo it, if you add too much saturation, the image is going to look strange. It's going to look artificial and not not natural so uh, my advice is increase saturation increase vibrance but restrain yourself don't use the slider too much because it's not going to do any good to your images the next step includes brightening the image right now the image is a bit dark in order to address this I've created three layers, three adjustment layers. The first one being brightness contrast adjustment, which I set at 15%, so I'm brightening the image by 15%. Now this brightens the image of course, but it also reduces the contrast. In order to bring back contrast, I've created a second layer, a curves adjustment layer, in which I drew a slight S-curve to darken the dark areas and brighten the bright areas. This brings back the contrast. And now, because of this S-curve as well as the brightness adjustment, we have some overexposed values which can be seen at the histogram here at the far right end and in order to address this I've added a live filter, a shadows and highlights live filter which darkens the brightest 5% of the 
tonal values by 10% plus it brightens the darkest 10% of the tonal values by 10%. As you can see on the far right end of the histogram the overexposed pixels are now reduced and if we compare the situation to the image before the correction and after the correction we can see that we managed to brighten the image without losing too much of its contrast. By the way I chose luminosity as blend mode instead of normal because in the normal blend mode if you for example draw an S-curve or adjust brightness or shadows and highlights the normal blend mode also affects the color saturation and if you choose luminosity instead of normal you can alter the brightness or contrast without influencing the color saturation. Once again we can take advantage of our gradient map, our tones check gradient map to see the distribution of the tonal values and again we can check the situation before and after the correction and here it is very obvious that we managed to increase the brightness of the image without losing its contrast. After the adjustment of brightness, shadows and highlights plus the curves tool, it is now time to sharpen the image. We do this in three different steps. The first step is clarity. It's a live filter which I've already prepared and if we activate it we can zoom in and if we compare before and after there has already been quite some sharpening. Clarity is also a live filter meaning you can change the settings at any time. In this case I went for a radius of 4 pixels and I also adapted the blend ranges. With blend ranges you can specify whether the live filter or a certain layer affects the whole tonal range or only certain areas. In this case I reduced the opacity of the effect for values of 10% brightness or below to 50% and I did the same for values of 90% or above. The reason for this is I want to protect the darkest and brightest tones because in the dark areas if you apply too much sharpening you only increase noise and if you apply too much sharpening in the highlights you get blown out highlights. So with this custom blend range I can protect my highlights and my darkest tones. The next step in our three step sharpening process is the use of the plugin Nick Sharpener Pro 3 which is part of the Nick collection. In order to do this I've already prepared two new layers. The one called Copy here is merged from all layers below 
and I've switched off the layers below because with all those layers beneath activated the program becomes really slow and by deactivating all the layers below after having merged them I can really increase the speed of Affinity Photo. And I've duplicated that layer and renamed this new layer to Nick Sharpener Pro 3 because that's the name of the tool we are going to use now. Let's get started. The plugins are in the menu Filter, Plugins, Nick Collection, Sharpener Pro 3, Output Sharpener. The user interface of this plugin is actually really simple. We have the preview area here with a before after comparison. We have the navigation window here where we can navigate the image and look for a good spot to charge the sharpening effect and we have the sharpening tools on the right. I've already determined the values that I'm going to use. It's 10% for structure, 15% for local contrast and 10% for focus. And if we move the before after comparison slider we can see that this makes a huge difference. Please be aware that sharpening usually reintroduces some noise. You can see this in the sky for example or also in the dark values. This problem is standard with all sh sharpening techniques and we are going to address this problem later. For now I'd like to apply this sharpening effect globally to the whole image, so I click on OK. Alright, Affinity now applies the effect and if we zoom in and switch off this layer and see the huge difference it makes. Alright, a quick save. And the first thing I'm going to do is adjust the blend range. Again, I want to protect the darkest tones, so I select 10% and 50%. Upwards from 22% I want the effect to be 100% up to 75% and again I reduce the effect for the brightest 10% of the tonal values to 50%. That's kind of a standard measure I always take when I sharpen images, like explained earlier, to protect the darkest tones and the highlights. All right. Now, the noise introduced by the sharpening in the darkest areas has already been reduced, but I'm not yet satisfied with it. So, the next step is I am going to 
reduce the opacity of the layer because in my opinion the sharpening effect is now too strong. I don't want to over sharpen the image so I reduce the opacity to let's say 70%. Globally I like the result now, but we have still the problem with the noise in the sky. In order to address this problem I add a layer mask. And I select the brush tool, an opacity of 50%, flow 25, hardness 25. These are good values to start with. I need a black brush because I want to reduce the effect in the sky. And now I can paint over the sky to reduce the sharpening effect. Let's take a look at the mask now. Looks good. Now we reduce the opacity to 25% and paint over the areas again where the reduction is not yet strong enough. Okay, let's check the result and if we switch off the mask and on again you can see that we have already greatly reduced the noise in the sky. Generally it looks good but there are a few areas where I want to further reduce the effect, particularly in this corner here and also over here. Let's reduce the brush size. Maybe a few brush strokes over here. And if we compare again with mask and without mask, we have definitely reduced the noise in the sky. This is good for me. There's no need to reduce all the noise because if you don't look at it at 100% or even more magnification, you cannot see that the noise now. It's not really conceivable anymore at uh, reasonable distances. Let's save the result again and we can go on to the next step.
Now we are almost done. But before we add the last step, I'd like to mention that I've again adapted the mask for our nick sharpening layer because there is some noise in the river. I've reduced the sharpening effect in the river and I've also globally reduced opacity to 60% because the effect was a bit too strong at 70%. But now let's add the last layer. In Affinity Photo we can add a new live filter layer and select high pass filter. This gives us a non-destructive way to add high pass sharpening. Here I select a radius of 8 pixels, which is usually enough. Rarely I use 9 pixels, but very often it's 8 pixels that suits best in my opinion. In order to get high pass sharpening, we need to select overlay as blend mode. And we can already see the sharpening effect this has on the image. Of course this effect is much too strong, but we will address that later. First we will once again adapt the blend ranges. I want to reduce the effect to 50% for the lowest 10% of the total values. 50% and above get 100% of the effect, 75% is the limit here and I want to reduce the effect to 50% for the brightest 10% of our tonal values. All right. Now let's reduce the effect globally. A value of 40% seems right to me. Let's compare before and after. Yes, that looks good. Now, as a final step, we want to check the histogram to make sure we don't have blown highlights or areas that are too dark, but it still looks good and we can proceed to the next step. Before we export the image, I'd like to add one more effect. I'd like to add a vignette do this by adding a new live filter layer and there's a dedicated vignette filter layer. I choose luminosity as blend mode because I want to avoid any alteration of the saturation of the colors. I choose a very low exposure value to better see the vignette. Later on I will change exposure again to a more reasonable value. I set hardness of the vignette to well 75 looks good. Scale to 120 and a value of 90% for shape. Now like already mentioned, I increase the exposure again to something like 
minus 8 right and I fine-tune the effect by reducing the opacity maybe 60 percent well 70 this looks like a good compromise to me no it's too much 60 is better yes with the help of a vignette we can guide the viewer and influence the way he looks at the image. The darkened corners guide the viewer and draw his attention towards the middle of the image where all the main points of interest are. For example the church here and the city. A nice side effect is also that the noise in the river that um, was introduced during the sharpening becomes less prominent because of the darkening effect of the vignette. But that's only a side effect and not the reason why I added the vignette. Okay, now the image is finally complete. I save once more and I export the image to a TIFF file. I leave the size alone. I have a preset for 8-bit TIFF files sRGB. I check the settings 8-bit sRGB, alright, and I export the image Yes, I want to replace it. Before I end the video, I'd like to add two remarks. First, I'd like to mention the fact that the process I just described to you is only one way how to process an image like this. There are countless other ways and your personal workflow might be totally different than mine. That's absolutely fine. Second, I'd like to mention that in order to keep this video reproducible to everybody, I deliberately chose not to use any commercial plugins. I only wanted to use plugins that are freely available, like the Nick collection, for example. In reality, I also use plugins by the company Topaz Labs, for example, Topaz Detail, Topaz Contrast, Topaz Denoise. These plugins are very handy, but like I said, in order to keep this video reproducible, I chose not to use them. That's it for today. This concludes my three steps tutorial on how to develop an HDR night photograph using the tools DxO Photo Lab. Aurora HDR and Affinity Photo. I hope you liked the video. If you did, please hit the thumbs up, leave a comment and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching and goodbye.